Hey, this is Jim Bergman with MeasureQuick. I want to talk a little bit about profiling today, and profiling is probably one of the most important elements of MeasureQuick because you have to tell us what type of equipment you're working on so we can help you with the diagnostics. And if you don't profile things right, it's, it goes back to the old saying, garbage in is garbage out. And so I want to show you a little bit about profiling and how that works. So what I'm going to do here is, um, in the MeasureQuick application, there's two, two different buttons here on the I screen, the information screen. One of them is for your, uh, basically you tell it a split or a uh, package unit, but the second one over here is where we tell it a little bit about uh, how the system works. This is our profile button. So you see it has a cooling profile and a heating profile. When I kick on the cooling profile, this is where number one I tell it the tonnage. So in this case here, it's a ton and a half system. If you look over here on the label here, this is a RPNL 018 JAZ. 018 is a uh, ton and a half of cooling, right? 12,000 BTUs per ton, that's 18,000 BTUs, so that's a ton and a half of cooling. So I'll select ton and a half. Now the refrigerant on here is R410A. Again, you're gonna find that on the manufacturer's label, it's 410A. Nominal airflow, if you don't know what nominal airflow is, there's basically three different airflows here. Humid climates like Florida, standard climates, Ohio, Michigan, Indiana, or really dry climates like Arizona, right? Typically, most of the guys in the country are gonna be using 400 standard CFM per ton, so we're gonna leave that one checked as it is. If you have a design airflow, like if you've, got, if you've gone through and you've done a heat loss calculation, you have a different target, sensible latent split, you can actually enter in the exact design airflow. And then our SEER reading. So this is 13 to 16 SEER. If I tap on that, it's two ways you can tell. Number one is you can look at the seasonal energy efficiency ratio. If you have the guide on here, sometimes you just have to go into the, into the system and you gotta look over here, you might see it's a 13 SEER heat pump. So look around for indicators of what kind of a SEER rating this is. In this case, this is a 13 SEER unit. So we'll go ahead and click that. Older stuff, like this is those really old Moncrief units that might be kicked at an angle, you know, 10 SEER things. But all you gotta do is to select your SEER rating is simply select the correct SEER and you're good to go. Now, metering device. We need to know whether it's TXV, fixed, piston, capillary tube. In this case here, if we go over to this unit, you can see right here, it's got a TXV on there. Uh, I had this bulb, I just wrapped it with a, uh, with a rag here just so it's not sweating in the shop here. But obviously if you have a TXV bulb on the line, uh, that's a TXV system. So we'll go ahead and leave that sit there for just a minute. So I'm gonna go ahead and select on this TXV thermostatic expansion valve. And now I need to know whether it's a high efficiency evaporator. Now this is where it gets a little bit tricky. Ream makes these air handlers. I'm gonna go back over here to the air handler for a minute. You look way down in there where it says model number. Keep going up a little bit further. That model number, if you look at that, that's a, a 024. That's a two ton evaporator. So what we have there is we have a, a ton and a half system, a ton and a half condenser with a two ton coil. And this is very, very common. You might see it out there. And what we call that is a high efficiency evaporator. When you have additional surface area on there, what happens is you raise the boiling point of the refrigerant because it just generates more gas than the compressor can remove. The compressor becomes a restricted device. So we build that pressure up and it's gonna operate at a higher evaporator temp than a typical unit would. So what we wanna do is select, in this case here, high efficiency evaporator. Superheat, it's typically nominal 10 to 12 and then subcooling requirements. So let's take a look at that. I'll delete this out for a minute. We'll come over here to our tag here. Now we're at about between 55 and 75 degrees in here. So we're somewhere, and this is a, if you look here, RPNL 018, and this is upflow, UH is upflow on there. We'll go down to the subcooling requirements. And at 55, between 55 and 72 is 19 to 20 degrees. So we'll just set that at uh, 19 degrees or 20, or you can even do, if we wanted to, 19.5. Whatever floats your boat there, you can actually get that right down to what you want. And then we can put in our total external static pressure, 0.5, and then we got the whole system profiled and we can hit submit. Now what this is gonna do for us here is it's gonna calculate where the pressure should be. So you can see my pressure is almost dead center of my target. Same thing here with my high side pressure. Let's look what happens when we have the wrong profile. So if I tell it's 13 to 16 here, right, pressure looks good. If I tell it that it's a, a 17 sear, now the pressure looks too high. So I've gone from a system that has no problems to a system now that looks like it has problems because I have the wrong sear rating selected for that condenser. Go back to the 13 to 16 sear, puts the target right in the right place. So these are really, really important things to understand when we're calculating all these targets and it's all, you can see these are all dynamic so this is all recalculating live as we go. 
that if we don't have the system profiled co correctly, we're not gonna get uh, the correct readings. In this case here, our superheat looks good, but our subcooling's a little bit low. We have a little low charge in here, been taking gauges on and off the machine all day. Here, our return air dry bulbs, obviously, the return air at 64 degrees is too cold. If I tap on any one of these, it'll show me that, but it'll show me uh, how the system should be running. In this case here, our split looks good. You know, it's looking at, when we look at a 64 to 44, you've got a 20 degree split on there. We'll tap this again, we can actually see the split, 19.6 degrees. Airflow looks good, split looks good, right? But you can obviously see that all these targets are generated by that profile. So the profiling is really, really important. Same thing with electrical. If we go into electrical performance, we also have a profile here, a configuration button, where we're telling it's a split system, single phase, 208 condensing voltage, single phase evaporator fan, 208 nominal fan voltage, and a PSC motor. All this is used to calculate how much power the system's using, so you need to have these in there correct also. We can close that up uh, if we want to just minimize that and get it out of the way, but there are some profiling things you have to do here to make the targets come in correctly. So hopefully that gives you a little bit of an idea of how important a profile is, and if you do that right, it'll nail the system operation every single time. And that's really one of the most important things with, uh, with getting the system commissioned properly and making sure that you don't get unwarranted diagnostics just based off of bad data when you start. So anyway, hopefully you got a little bit out of this. If you've got any questions, please feel to ask them below in the comments section. We'll be glad to answer them. This is Jim Bergman with MeasureQuick. Thanks a lot for watching.